Hello, I'm Matthew Weinstock with Hospitals and Health Networks, reporting to you live from San Diego and the Health Forum American Hospital Association Leadership Summit. The meeting closed down on Saturday with a thought-provoking keynote by Dr. Eric Topo of Scripps Health, who talks a lot about the creative destruction of medicine. Dr. Topol's with me now. Dr. Topol, thanks for joining me. Thank you, Matthew. So you talk a lot about the creative destruction of medicine. That was the title of your book. I was wondering if you could give us some examples of where you're seeing technology uh, create some real disruptions in healthcare. Well, it's kind of been late. Uh, that is, the digital world has invaded every other space except for healthcare. So a good example would be uh, hospital designs. Uh, some have projected these beautiful, futuristic hospital designs, and my design is uh, a blank picture, no hospitals. That is, only hospitals for intensive care units, operating rooms, procedure rooms, but all the other monitoring would be done at home. That's a pretty uh, thought-provoking statement for, especially to a crowd of hospital executives. Right. I know that is going to be tough, but eventually we're going to get there. Uh, it's going to take a while because the digital integration with healthcare has been very slow, exemplified by, of course, electronic health records and health information systems. But once we get going with sensors and scanners and sequencing, that's when this thing really uh, starts to zoom forward. And we start to realize, why would you have someone in the hospital, a regular bed, when you could have much less expensively, safely, conveniently have them in their own home? So you've written and talked a lot about this in the past. Uh, and these technologies, the mobile technologies, whether they're devices or applications, uh, really haven't been tested yet. They're not regulated yet. So is there any concern on your part that we're getting the cart before the horse? Well, you know, the technology is here. It works, but we have to prove it. And so you're absolutely right, uh, Matt, about validating this. But you can kind of see the fast forward here is that once it is indeed validated, why would you keep somebody in, in a hospital, for example? Or why would you have physical visits for office visits? A and so many things that we can do to understand each individual, digitize human beings. And this is something that we never really had the tools to do before. And so as a physician yourself, how would you adapt to that environment? Well, it requires a lot of plasticity. Uh, the doctors who don't adapt are going to be left uh, by the wayside. It's really going to take uh, the willingness to let go. The paternalism and the autonomy of the physician uh, practice is going to be changed because it's new, a new partnership with patients really driving this. The data is going to be going, flowing to them through their smartphones and tablets, and it's only going to be for guidance and for the wisdom of physicians' experience that they turn uh, to get medical um, uh, care. So it's a very different model going forward. But you've seen the relative slow adoption of EMRs and that kind of technology. How quickly, how quickly or how slowly do you think hospitals can move toward this world you're talking about? Well, it's really up to the medical community and the hospitals to see whether or not they want to drive this. Um, it's a very different world than the tower of babel of electronic medical records because these systems work uh, independent of that. Of course, it'd be nice if they all were uh, fit together, but that isn't the case. But when you have uh, portable high-resolution ultrasound, which, by the way, 125 million ultrasound studies done a year, or you have sequencing to define uh, a very challenging diagnostic uh, case uh, to save perhaps hundreds of thousands of dollars. If you start to implement those in health systems, independent of our woes with electronic records, that could really uh, push the field forward. And we're already seeing this technology breakthrough in other industries, right? So healthcare has got to kind of catch up. I think healthcare is the last Mohican as we've got it. I'll talk a little, talked about uh, transportation, education, every single sector except healthcare. And it's going to, it's inevitable. It's just a matter of when. So as you talk to hospital executives, what do they need to do over the next five, 10 years to start to embrace this kind of new world? Well, first is the awareness uh, and then a receptivity to change. It's very difficult to change in medicine. We kind of have this uh, very ossified, sclerotic view. But if, indeed, if you see these technologies in action, you start to realize that this is uh, a, a game life changer. This is a, a biggest shakeup in the history of healthcare. And so that realization is the first step towards starting to implement these things. And, and indeed, some health systems in the U.S. are starting to move on this. I guess the last piece of, of this is the economic question. So healthcare are, hospitals 
are under tremendous economic pressure, whether it's Medicare cuts or cuts coming from private payers. How does that fit into this equation? Well, actually, I think that's what's going to drive this. We've got to innovate out of this mess. We have the worst economic crisis uh, one could imagine in, in healthcare and medicine, but we have now tools and the means to get out of that. That is to be much more precise, much more uh, parsimonious about how we render care. And this is exciting because it's coming at the right time when we need it. We're desperate uh, for change. Well, great. Dr. Tobel, I appreciate your time today. Thanks very much uh, for the chance to discuss this with you. And I'm Matthew Weinstock. That concludes our coverage from the Health Forum American Hospital Association Leadership Summit. Thanks for tuning in.